<laughs> All right, so our goal is to, is to help you guys and, and, and for everybody to grow in Christ, right? That's our goal. We want to not grow in We don't want to do anything other than grow, you know? It's like when you gather, it's like we can gather, but sometimes nothing happens. Sometimes our minds don't change. Sometimes, sometimes all we do is um, hear the same repetitive stuff over and over again, same old quotes, same, you know, stuff like that. Um, or sometimes we gather and chat, and, and chat, but we just chat about, you know, worldly things. Even though it's the saints coming together, sometimes we come together and just talk about football, talk about this, that, school, working out, the pets, the dog, the cat. And it's like, that's cool, because that's, it's real life, but it won't really help us grow. And I just, I want to concentrate on that. Get to the word, and that's how we're going to do it. You know, everything that we, any, anything that, we, that we're that we going to determine is, is a fact or is something that we need to hear or is wisdom, it's got to come from here. So that's what I, that's, I want to, I want to help y'all with that too. And I want us to help each other with that too. Because sometimes we can go, go, go according to our opinion, what feels good to us. And just because something feels good or comfortable, it don't mean it's the truth. And if it's not truth, it's not going to set you free, right? Yeah. All right. So we just we want to use our call and God-given abilities to help you guys grow in knowing God, number one, knowing his word, number two, living for God. <laughs> you know, you know, use knowing if you're not going to apply it, right? And, and in personal evangelism, because we got to reach out to people. People are lost. People are going in. Everybody, everybody we see that's not in Christ is condemned. They're going to hell. You know, hell is a real thing. It might not sound good, but it's real. You know, Jesus talked about it all the time. So we got to remember the lost who are in the position we used to be. You know, and I don't know about you guys, but I was in jail when I got saved. I was not only on my way to hell, I was on my way to a life sentence because I shot somebody. So, <laughs> you know, I'm glad that a, a minister came to see me every week. I'm glad that my mom and my sister got saved and started sharing the gospel with me, brought me a Bible and all that. If they would have did that, I would just be another, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I don't think I would be free. I'll just be in there, not saved, shanking somebody right now. A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth, you know? I had to renew my mind in there a lot. You know, I had, I had to learn how to how to have that fear of the Lord. <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I had to teach myself, if you want to get out of here, like you got to change, you know? And I, I had a shame, but I had to keep myself from using it because just because you're able to do something or just because you confess Jesus, it doesn't mean that you, you can do whatever you can do. And we have the same issue out here. We don't got shanks, you know, we don't got whatever, but we have this. And a lot of times we're like, oh, I go to church, I confess Jesus, and that fear of the Lord is gone. But we got to do the same thing I was doing. Look, just because you're in this environment doesn't make this okay with God. Just because they're doing it doesn't make this legal and happen. Same type of thing. So we, I just want to help all of us grow in that scenario. But anyway, yeah, people need Jesus, man. So we, we want to grow in personal evangelism as well. Um, most of us are not truly equipped as we should be. That's just real. If you look at the body of Christ, if you look at Facebook, you look at Instagram, you look on YouTube, you go to any of these thousands of churches out here in the Charlotte and the outskirts area. Most of us, if you want to be honest, it's sad, but it's true. We are not truly equipped to live out who we are in Christ. So I want us to be equipped. Might not be a huge building where a hundred people could be equipped, a thousand, but we can be equipped. And then we can change our own lives, our family's lives, and then the people will reach out to you for our lives. Because when you truly equip, something's going to change. Right. Amen? It's not just going to be a confession. It's not just going to be a lot of noise. It's not just going to be, you know, 20 friends, you know, meeting together, but then nothing is happening. We want good fruit. Well, Jesus wants good fruit, and we just want it because he wants it. Mm -hmm. That's our Lord. All right. Yeah. So it's sad, but it's a fact. So 2 um, Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So our whole goal with speaking the word, with growing in the word, 
is that growing into righteousness, being transformed. God is righteous. God is holy. There's no way we can be transformed by him to become more like him and not become more righteous in action. Now, they're not an identity because everybody, you know, everybody wants to know that they're righteous, that they're forgiven, that they have been made right with God. But they don't stop there because it's the gospel is not just who you now are. It's who you are and what are you going to do with it? Because at the end of the day, the judge is not going to say or judge you for who you are. The Bible will not say God will judge you for who you are. The Bible says God will judge you for your works. So that's absolutely 100% what you do. And a lot of people have trouble knowing what to do, how to do it, unless they know who they now are. And a lot of people get stuck in who they are and they use that as an excuse to not do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's why it says it's good for doctrine. So we need good doctrine, good word, solid word. People aren't equipped because the scriptures are being taught how they are. So if we go back to a lot of people are not equipped, it goes back to, to that 2 Timothy 3.16. What are they getting taught? What are we hearing? What are we listening to? Who are we hanging with? What, what, what kind of friends we got? We got Christian friends, but are they true Christian friends? And we got a teacher, we got a pastor, but are they teaching the word as it should be taught? Um, the word is good, but sometimes the teaching isn't. I, I don't mean the skill. You know, I, you know, I'm, I don't like to point fingers like, ah, you can't teach. I, I don't come from that background. You know, I'm educated now, but I don't come from that background. So I remember, you know, trying to minister to somebody and, and witness to somebody, even in jail. And, and, and in the back of my mind, I was like, in jail, I haven't even been to church. So it was, I had no qualification, I had no degrees, I had no, but I had him and I had the word to share. So I'm not talking about their skill. When I say bad teaching, I mean, there's yeast in there. There's manipulation in there. There's old covenant in there, or there's you know a love of money in there, or there's a, a, a just evil unrighteousness in there, right? So we got to make sure we get into some good doctrine. So that's the that's, that does the goal here with that. That's Second Timothy three, um, Second Timothy three sixteen. You guys good? Yes. All right. So that's the introduction.